Good afternoon, colleagues. It's 12 p.m., so I am going to call the fifth meeting of the Corporate Services Committee to order. Uh, this remains a uh, hybrid virtual meeting during the COVID-19 emergency. Uh, individuals can check the city website for current details of COVID-19 service impacts, and meetings can be viewed via live stream on YouTube and on the city website. I also want to inform everyone that the City of London is committed to making every effort possible to provide alternative formats and communications supports for council, standing, or advisory committee meetings and information upon request. To make a request for any city service, please contact accessibility at london.ca or phone 519-661-2489, extension 2425. If you'd like to make a request specific to this meeting, please contact csc at london.ca. Uh, colleagues will begin by looking for any disclosures of pecuniary interest. And I see none, so we will move right along to the consent agenda. Uh, we have 10 items on the consent agenda. I have not been made aware of any items that individuals uh, wish pulled. Uh, I'll just take a quick look around to see if there's anything that people want pulled to deal with separately before we move on to discussion. And I see none, so I'll look for a mover and a seconder for the consent agenda. Moved by Councillor Fife Millar, seconded by Councillor Hamu. Uh, that is on the floor, and we'll look for any questions or comments. And I've got Deputy Mayor Morgan to begin. Uh, thank you. I have a, a question on one and comments on two others. Um, my question is on the, the 2022 debenture uh, issuance. Um, uh, certainly, I support us, you know, going to the market um, as uh, the Bank of Canada starts to raise interest rates. Um, it was mentioned in the report that several other municipalities has, have moved forward with, uh, with issuances. Do we have any sense on, on how they're doing and whether we can anticipate um, interest rates in line or approximately in line with where we've been in the last couple of issuances? Are we expecting to, to see an increase in the cost of borrowing? Um, and I'm just wondering if you have the ability to, to, to project that from what other municipalities have been doing with their offerings. I, obviously, I know our, our credit rating and our history of, of issuances will weigh into what, what rate we're going to get, but I'm just wondering if there are trends in the marketplace that are seeing an upward cost of borrowing or not. Thank you, and we'll go to staff, uh, and I suspect that that will be Ms. Barbone who will want to respond to that. Yes, thank you through the chair. And uh, if, I have, if Mr. Murray has anything else to add, he can jump in and let me know. But essentially, we are we are uh, we do have some predictions with respect to what that cost of borrowing will be, um, and are working with our three fiscal agents. So we have a range of approximately somewhere between two point five and two point eight of what we're predicting, and certainly that could still vary with the time that we go out. But that's certainly what we're projecting at this point, and uh, we have followed other municipalities, and, and we believe that that's uh, fairly reasonable. Although until um, we actually go to issue yeah. that, we won't have any certainty um, with respect to what that number is. Thank you, Ms. Barbon. Deputy Mayor, did you have any follow-up? No, that's good on that one. I appreciate the information and uh, and I expected that the cost of borrowing would start to rise with, uh, with the changes that have been happening, but uh, it still seems like it's going to be in a very competitive range for us uh, for the projects we need to complete. Um, my, I have two comments now, um, and, and the first is on our year 2022 tax policy. First off, I want to thank our staff for a comprehensive report and really hitting on, on the types of things that we need to hit on in this. And, and I do support uh, us taking a very cautious approach by not making adjustments to our ratios given uh, how unpredictable the future is. Uh, with, with the freeze of, of valuations and a lot of question marks about uh, what the base year will be, uh, when that freeze will, will uh, be unlocked, and frankly, how the different asset classes have, have shifted over time. I, I do think we want to maximize our ability to move in the future with, uh, with our tax ratios, which means uh, keeping a, a steady state and, and, uh, and sticking with the staff recommendation for now, I think is, is good. Um, certainly, I also would echo that when the province unfreezes uh, the MPAC assessments and determines a base year uh, and a phase in for that, uh, we should be very active on uh, on how this will impact the different tax classes because there, there is the possibility of significant shifts between the tax classes based on how they've appreciated over this period of time where it's been frozen. 
Uh, I don't know what those are, but I, I certainly know that our staff will be very involved in this, and I know we need to engage with our provincial partner on, on their plan for moving back to a, a, more, um, a more normal um, period of assessments. For now, with the freeze, though, I think this is the right move ahead, and I want to thank our staff for an excellent report. Uh, and the final thing I wanted to comment on is just uh, I appreciate the report from uh, Councillor Hopkins on the Association of Municipalities of Ontario board update and, and you know, continue to thank her for the excellent work she's doing uh, on behalf of us at AMO. So thanks, Councillor Hopkins. I don't know if you're going to comment on, on your report, but uh, I did want to mention that um, I certainly appreciate you keeping us up to date and, and the work that's being done there. Thank you, Dep Deputy Mayor. And Councillor Hopkins uh, does have her hand up to be on the speaker's list, so I suspect she may want to share uh, some updates with us on that. But I do have uh, Councillor Cassidy as a member of the committee uh, with her hand up. So, Councillor Cassidy, we're going to go to you first. And Councillor Cassidy, you're muted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so despite uh, no one pulling consent items, I don't want anyone to think that um, none of these things are important. It's actually a really meaty agenda with a lot of really important information on here. And the one I want to talk about is the uh, 2022 education tax rate. So I know this was something that was important to businesses in London. When you see the annual reduction that uh, as, as a sector, the businesses in London will, will enjoy, it's a 20... Oh, just a little over $20 million reduction. And uh, and I know London and I'm sure other municipalities that had this same concern. Uh, I know in London, we phrased it as, as something that could be instant COVID relief uh, to help businesses get back on track following two years of lockdowns and uncertainty. So I'm very grateful that the province went ahead with that. Now, the, 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 the aspect that is covered in this report talks about um, the payment uh, from uh, uh, the federal government. And I, and I just want to ask through you, Mr. Chair, to the, the treasurer, is this an unintended consequence of what we had been wanting the province to do for such a long time? Or is this directly related to COVID? I wonder if we could, I could just get some clarification and for the public as well, for businesses who may be uh, uh, watching this, uh, just some make it in clear to the lay, the lay general lay person. Sure, uh, Ms. Barbone, would you like to respond to that, please? Yes, thank you, through the chair. So um, the, the issue is that the prescribed regulations set out a specific rate and that the Crown corporations and federal entities are paying at a different rate. So um, they want to recognize that lower, uh, payment as do all the others and be in line. The difference with the, the education taxes for those, the municipality gets to keep the um, revenue from that and it funds directly the city budget. So as uh, the Councillor Cassidy did identify, it is a bit of an unintended consequence, um, only in so much that they are not paying based on the regulation that is prescribed for them, but that they are trying to pay in a different amount and as such would have a different uh, impact on the municipality. The impact on the city of London is quite small in comparison to some other jurisdictions. However, um, we are trying to ensure that those payments are paid at the prescribed rate so as not to impact and have any unintended consequences on the municipality. Thank you, Ms. That Barbone. Councillor Cassidy, do you have any follow-up for that? Yeah, just a couple of comments. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and through you, thank, thank you, Ms. Barbone, for that. I'm sure um, that uh, that's fairly good news for the City of London, um, uh, because when we saw in the report the amount of the gap, that uh, seems quite alarming. So I'm happy to hear that London's, uh, um, London is not uh, in the average or above average there. And, and I do want to take the time again to th thank the Mayor for his advocacy in this area. I know um, I know many councillors uh, took whatever opportunity they could when speaking to our provincial counterparts to talk about this issue. I know in Ward 5, I have a very, very large employer, um, the, the Masonville Place Mall. It's owned by Cadillac Fairview, and they could illustrate in very real concrete terms the difference that they were paying for business education taxes compared to their properties in Toronto and, and Ottawa and, and other larger cities. And so they really did see that inequity that businesses in London were having to deal with. So again, I'm really happy this issue has been resolved 
and hopefully we can handle uh, that other little part on behalf of all municipalities in Ontario, uh, not just London. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. And I also have Mayor Holder who would like to make a comment. So your worship, we'll go to you next. Thanks very much. And it's nice to be back. Uh, uh, Councillor Cassidy, thanks for the kind comment. I will tell you that London was the strongest advocate for the business education tax uh, issues and uh, to the point where, where London was acknowledged uh, in the last federal budget for being the leader in uh, promoting the reduction of the business education tax. And, uh, and I think that was exceptionally important. Uh, you asked the question quite rightly about the unintended consequences of federal agencies that uh, are trying to take advantage of the lower business education tax. Um, I would add that we are, uh, we are having some pretty significant conversations with the federal government now. Uh, while it's modest, relatively speaking, uh, in London, the, uh, the impact of the federal agencies, uh, corp Crown Corps, that uh, are looking to take advantage of the, of the uh, PILT uh, uh, lower rate. Uh, if you're in Ottawa, that's about $13 million. Like it's not an insignificant significant number I would say and Ms. Barbone could correct me but I think we're in the range of a couple hundred thousand dollars perhaps a touch more uh, so uh, you can know that uh, that uh, certainly uh, the Ontario big city mayors have been uh, speaking with uh, uh, the province and uh, uh, about the impacts and trying to leverage the federal government as well for the feds to uh, to uh, I guess effectively lean on the uh, on these uh, uh, federal agencies because it's just not fair. It's not right. And uh, Ms. Barbone is quite correct that it, that goes directly against the tax implications of what we're doing. So with that, um, stay tuned. We're not done lobbying them. We were good on one, but now we've got this other. But the great news is that the biggest piece uh, in, in terms of the impact of business has been. Uh, has been well received. Apparently, it costs the province in real money uh, some six hundred million dollars a year, like forever, uh, as long as no government changes that uh, that approach. But that savings that goes directly to businesses right across the province, and with uh, COVID as it's been, uh, what a what an appropriate time to give support to uh, to businesses. It could. So that's it for me. Uh, so I appreciate uh, Councillor Cassidy bringing it up. I think that's appropriate. I'll turn it back to you, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Your Worship. And I've got Councillor Hamu uh, from the committee next on the speaker's list. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to bring your attention to the uh, Section 2.8, uh, KPMG Clara file sharing tool. Um, I'm just, maybe through the chair, I'm going to ask some questions about the security of the software. Um, I've been hacked personally by the Syrian Electronic Army, so I'm always cautious. Um, if you look on page 80 of our of the um, notes, you'll see here that KPMG does not guarantee that any content posted um, on KPMG Clara will be free from viruses and or other code that may have contaminated or destructive elements. I just want to ensure that everything's being tested properly before we put it on our servers. Can I have some clarification on that? Chair, through you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hamu. And uh, I see Ms. Barbone has turned her camera on. So Ms. Barbone, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you through the chair. Um, that's an excellent question and certainly one of our absolute um, uh, significant concerns with bringing forward um, this tool. So our ITS department has reviewed the tool thoroughly and ensured that it does meet um, and has no concerns from their perspective from a, uh, ensuring that the information security and the processes around that are intact. 
So um, the information that we are sharing through this is very much specific with our audit and we're supplementing the use of the technology also through some additional procedures on the file sharing piece on our side also. So we believe the risk on this is uh, certainly as well managed as well as we can, um, notwithstanding that um, certainly their agreement does allow those uh, other indemnities that are there, which uh, we always want to bring to Council's attention. So um, our, our IT security department has reviewed this thoroughly, and if there were concerns, this would not have been brought forward to the council, and uh, we would have had to, through the internal processes, rectified that process first before it would ever have brought forward for a review by the committee. Thank you, Ms. Barbon. Uh, Councilor Hamu, no, no for I'm good. Thank you. Thank okay. you. And we will now go uh, with thanks for her patience as she waited for uh, committee members to ask their questions. We'll go to Councillor Hopkins next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for recognizing me. And I was quite busy since I got kicked out of the meeting and had to make my way back again. Uh, so uh, thank you for allowing me to speak to 2.10. It is the AMO uh, update. And I would like to just... Um, uh, make some comments on the update that I am providing committee and council. Uh, for those of you who may not be that familiar, familiar with AMO, which stands for the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the board meets five times a year. And as chair of the Large Urban Caucus, I sit on the executive and the executive usually meets monthly as well as uh, meeting with the provincial government uh, at the MOU, which is the memorandum of understanding that the uh, that AMO has with, with the province. Housing has been of great interest to AMO lately. The past number of board meetings that uh, we have had this year, there's been great uh, conversation, uh, not uh, that every municipality, big or small, rural or urban has concerns about. And uh, the housing blueprint in February that AMO released included a summary on the committee. Uh, and, and you see that summary on the committee agenda, just for your information. I'd really encourage you, uh, it's just an executive summary, but there is lots of information, a lot of work, uh, AMO staff and the board, um, uh, sort of commit a lot, lots of work and time in coming up with the housing action blueprint. The housing blueprint provides a new starting point for AMO's housing related advocacy and includes recommendations for all levels of government, as well as the development community. Importantly, the blueprint includes principles and recommendations that reflect London's housing related needs. With the provincial election coming up in June, the blueprint will be a useful resource to political parties and candidates on municipal housing priorities and provide additional support to our local efforts. Uh, I'd like to give a further update uh, to the blueprint as well, since uh, AMO did release a um, uh, release their comments on the provincial housing task force. It uh, provided response uh, report earlier this month, the provincial task force was informed primarily by the development industry and AMO's response emphasized the need to include municipal import, input and expertise into provincial decisions around housing affordability. It's really important at AMO, the discussion around the affordability. AMO board and staff continue to work on this issue with the ultimate goal of protecting local decision making while taking meaningful steps to address the affordability and availability uh, of safe quality housing. As the chair of the Large German Caucus, I have regular opportunities to talk with council members from other cities about shared priorities and to bring these discussions to inform AMO's advocacy. Some of the advocacy items I've been most involved in recently include the additional homeless prevention funding to preserve the progress made possible through the SSRF. And we know the great work that uh, we have been able to do here in the city of London with this funding and 
hopefully it will continue. Completion of provincial federal negotiations on the national childcare framework and a commitment to $10 a day childcare. And we heard an announcement today. So thank you uh, to the province for uh, signing that agreement with the federal government. It's very much appreciated. Recognizing uh, the municipal role in strong pandemic recovery, both economically and socially, is still a conversation that we have at the Large Urban Caucus. I just want to give my thanks, Mr. Chair, to, to committee and to council for your confidence in me. Uh, and I, I really um, appreciate uh, uh, representing the City of London at the AMO board. I also want to send my thanks to uh, Nick Steinberg, uh, who is uh, assists me through the governmental external relations. Without his support, uh, it is really um, so much appreciated. There's a lot of time and effort that goes on behind the scenes. And I just want to recognize staff support um, uh, with the work that's been going on. And it's been a, a, a very busy, not only year, but especially uh, the past two years with the pa pandemic and having municipal concerns at the forefront uh, with the provincial government has been a, a great opportunity for me to represent the city of London. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopkins. And I, I think I can speak on behalf of all committee and, and likely on behalf of council on on this when I say thank you uh, for the work that you put into this. I, I know you spent a lot of hours on this and and uh, thanks to Mr. Steinberg as well because staff support is of course critically important. So thank you uh, and Mr. Steinberg for your efforts on our behalf at AMO. I have no one else on the speakers list colleagues. So uh, unless anyone uh, wants to raise their hand on any other items, we are going to uh, open the vote on uh, the consent agenda. Closing the vote, the motion's passed six to zero. Okay, colleagues, moving on to uh, the next items in the agenda. There are no scheduled items. Uh, item four is items for direction. Uh, we have three items here. Uh, these are dealing with applications for proclamations and the city hall flag policy. Uh, so we'll start with 4.1, an application for issuance of proclamation. Uh, Gillian Bear syndrome and chronic inflammatory dimelinating polyneuropathy awareness month. And I will express my sincere apologies to Mr. Uh, uh, Bedford right off the hop if I probably did uh, mangle some of those uh, words, but we'll, we'll see if there's uh, somebody who wants to put that on the floor. That's moved by Councillor Hamu and seconded by Councillor Fife Millar. Uh, any questions or comments on this colleagues? Seeing none, we will open the vote. Closing the vote, the motion's passed six to zero. On the agenda colleagues is item 4.2, application for issuance of proclamation for the Phelan Daffa week 2022. Do we have a mover for that? Moved by Councillor Cassidy. And I'll look for a seconder, Councillor Fife Millar. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we will open the vote. Uh, certainly the mover was Councillor Cassidy, the seconder was Councillor Fife Millar. Closing the vote, the motion is passed six to zero. And colleagues, item 4.3 is an appeal of flags at City Hall policy. Uh, you have the communications on this. Uh, I am in your hands as to how you want to proceed. Uh, and I will just say if we, oh, uh, Mayor Holder, the floor is yours. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Chair. I think we have a very consistent uh, flags policy at City Hall. And uh, 
from my from my standpoint, I don't see a need to. We've already now acknowledged uh, uh, the importance of uh, the event through uh, through the proclamation. I don't think it's necessary at this stage then to uh, to change our policy uh, for any one individual organization uh, in this. Uh, we have some exceptions, but this doesn't qualify. So I'm uh, prepared to recommend that we maintain status quo as it relates to the um, it relates to the uh, Philadelphia request uh, for the flagpole, and with that, um, uh, reject the appeal and maintain the city's uh, policy. So, Your Worship, I, I just want to be clear from a, uh, a, a clerking standpoint for a motion: Are you moving to receive and take no action? Not so much more articulate than I could be, uh, Chair, and uh, that works for me. Okay, and we'll look to see if there's a seconder for that, seconded by Councillor Hamu. Uh, any further question or comment, colleagues? Councillor Cassidy. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Just, I guess to the, to the clerk, um, the, either the city clerk, if he's on the line, or to the deputy city clerk, um, how do we determine if an organization is religious or political and therefore doesn't qualify under our flag policy? And I think the city clerk is on the line, so we will go to the city clerk. Yes, thank you, and through the chair. That's a very good question, councillor, and very difficult. I can say that this particular application was assessed by the uh, prior city clerk and uh, was deemed to be uh, religious and or political in nature and was denied uh, last year. Uh, and in my view, I would take the same approach and be consistent with uh, that determination from the previous year. So uh, so just a comment, Mr. Uh, Chair, this is a difficult one. Um, I'm gonna vote against take no action. I, My concern is when, when we see what's going on around the world and we see authoritarian regimes, they, actually it's the authoritarian regime that is deciding that an organization is political or not, or religious or not. And I don't think it's in, in our free democratic society that it's on us to agree with that regime. Um, so I, I, I understand where this will probably go. I, I will be voting against the motion that's on the floor. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. Do we have any further comment on this? Mayor Holder. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, you know, we dealt with this at the federal level as well. And, uh, and, and, and so while we have empathy with, with uh, this particular organization, and I think we've shown that, frankly, by virtue of the proclamation, the week-long proclamation we just supported, I think for us to presume it's anything other than political is not true. Um, and uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to, to Councillor Cassidy's comments. And I know she says this with this most sincere, sincerest of, uh, of regard for oppression in the world, but the very nature of that description suggests to me, and, and, and frankly, everything I know of this organization, it's, it's, it's absolutely a movement and it's intended to respond, as they've said, to communist China. And so I get that, and I understand why they are. But you know what? To change our flag policy uh, uh, to accommodate this, uh, I mean, there's time and place, and I do not believe uh, that uh, this is not, this is either the time nor the place uh, for this purpose. But I just want to make it clear: this is uh, not just uh, a cultural organization, as they suggest. I could suggest to you the lobbying that we would have at the federal level was exceptionally significant. And they're an important group. I'm not, and I'm not castigating them, which is why I supported their proclamation, but I cannot support changing our flag policy to accommodate what is clearly a political uh, direction. And I don't wish them poorly. I just uh, don't think it's uh, appropriate to change our policy. Thanks. Thank you, Your Worship, and Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, I just want to make a comment um, and not with not uh, disputing anything that the mayor is saying or, or anything. Um, I just want to say that I'm not in favor of changing the flag policy. My concern is uh, the designation of, of a particular group and, and I would support the appeal 
for those reasons that uh, uh, I, I, I don't agree that they're necessarily political by choice. And that's all. Thank you. And uh, Mayor Holder, you still have your hand up. I'm presuming that that's a leftover from your putting it up uh, a couple of minutes ago. I've been so absent in the last little while. It's just nice to uh, be recognized. Thank you. I'll take it down. And I see no other speakers, so we will open the vote uh, on this item. Closing the vote, the motion's passed five to one. Thank you, colleagues. Moving on to item five, deferred matters, additional business. We have three items of additional business on our added agenda. The first is 5.1. Uh, it's an application for the issuance of proclamation, World Press Freedom Day. And we'll look for a mover and a seconder to get that on the floor. Moved by Councillor Cassidy and seconded by Deputy Mayor Morgan. Any questions or comments? Councillor Cassidy. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Happy to move this again. We did this last year. Um, and again, with the climate of the world today, uh, press freedom is more important now than ever. And I see no other hands and a whole lot of nodding of heads to Councillor Cassidy's comments. So we will open the vote on this item. Closing the vote, the motion's passed six to zero. Thank you, clerk and colleagues. Item 5.2 on the added is court security and prisoner transportation program transfer payment agreement. Uh, this is an agreement between the city and the province and we'll look for a mover and a seconder to get this on the floor. Moved by Councillor Hamu and seconded by Councillor Fife Millar. Questions or comments on this item? Okay, seeing none, we will open the vote on this item. Closing the vote, the motion is passed six to zero. Item 5.3 is the last item on our public agenda, uh, and that is the added election sign bylaw update. Uh, as colleagues will recall, this is a referral back uh, from council, uh, our last council meeting. And I will look, uh, we've got Deputy Mayor Morgan and then Councillor Hamu. Yes, I'd like to ask some questions about this. Um, and it's really, um, uh, I don't necessarily need changes to the bylaw, but I, I want to understand how our staff interpret the bylaw from, from a, a practical standpoint when they're actually enforcing it. Uh, and it's related to the the, the hundred meters um, between signs. Uh, my understanding from the discussion, although I'm not sure it's clear from my reading of the bylaw, is that uh, signs would would it's not a hundred meters from a specific sign as a radius in all directions, uh, but it refers to the same side of the road. In other words, uh, if you had a sign on one side of you know say Wonderland Road. You could have a sign, you know, right across the road from it on the other side going the other direction uh, for traffic the other way. Uh, they may be within 100 meters of each other, but that the 100 meter uh, issue is, is more so for signs on the same side of the road, which would then, I think, be a little more permissive at intersections where you have, you know, different turning radiuses given where, uh, where essentially four different sides of the road meet. So. I just want to, if our staff could comment on, is that how it would be enforced? It's it's not a hundred meter radius to the sign, but it is a hundred meters uh, for signs on the same side of the road. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And I think perhaps, I know Ms. Chapman is uh, with us in the meeting. Uh, Ms. Chapman, could you comment on that? Uh, yes, to the chair, the measuring would be on the same side of the road uh, between uh, signs, uh, so the 100 meter distance um, and never crossing over the road. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay, now I'll make some comments on the general bylaw. So I appreciate that we've had a back and forth discussion. We've referred this back a few times. 
Um, overall, uh, uh, given that answer, I'm going to support uh, uh, this overall um, package of changes. Uh, I will say there's not, not everything in here is something that, that I certainly supported through the discussion. Uh, I, I still do have my own concerns about the, the 96 hours to 72 hours. I think there are good points on either side. I just, I, I, having won an election and lost an election, I can just say it is much harder when you lose to get volunteers to take signs down than when you win. Everybody wants to come and help you when you win. And when you lose, uh, people uh, might not show up as much. And so um, uh, I, was, I was okay with allowing for a little bit extra time because I think it benefits those who are not successful in the election. That being said, I appreciate the dialogue and discussion and that this is something we're building consensus around as a council. And so I'll support the overall package, even though there's a couple things in there that, that aren't my personal preference, but I think council's done a good job of, of debating this and, and, uh, and the councillors uh, who have hammered out the compromises, I'm, I'm gonna support them and, uh, and their ability to find, uh, find something that I think there's some common ground on on this. So, so thank you to the councillors who, who are pushing this and, uh, and I will support uh, this version of the bylaw. Thank you, De Deputy Mayor Morgan. Uh, Councillor Cassidy, you had your hand up and then it went down, but uh, did you want to make some comments on this as I know you and I uh, uh, worked on this? Yeah, no, I I'm fine, Mr. Chair. I decided, you know, we've spoken a lot about this. I'm happy with these compromises and thanks to you and to Councillor Morgan for uh, the work that uh, that we've done to try to reach a consensus. So I hope that the, the committee supports uh, this work and uh, I guess we won't know till the vote's closed. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. And I've got Councillor Fife Millar uh, on the speaker's list next. Thank you, Chair, and through you, just, just to confirm as I read this, and, and I'm in support of the, the bylaw here, but on the item that's 100 meters, I, I assume that refers to public property and not private property, is that correct? Uh, I will go uh, back to Ms. Chapman just to confirm uh, that the 100 meter separation is for public property signs. The chair, yes, that is my understanding of the bylaw. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fife Millar. And we have no other speakers to this. Uh, if committee will indulge me to just make a comment very quickly from the chair, uh, I, I just want to thank Councillor Cassidy uh, for working with me on this. I, I know that we both had. Uh, some different views on where it could go, and I think we've we've found a good compromise here where we're going to help uh, reduce public property sign visual pollution uh, and yet uh, allow uh, the freedom of people who want to display a, a sign on their own uh, private lawn an opportunity to do so when it's appropriate for them. So I'm really happy where this has landed. I, I think it's been a good process to get here. Uh, even though we are, are pushing up against the deadline to get it in place, uh, we managed to do that. So uh, thank you colleagues um, and uh, since there's no other hands up, I'm going to ask the clerk to open the vote on this. Closing the vote, the motion's passed six to zero. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, that concludes the items on our public agenda. We do have uh, four items uh, for which we need to move in camera. So I'm gonna look for a motion to move in camera now. And that's moved by Councillor Hamu and seconded by Councillor Cassidy. And we'll open the vote on that. Closing the vote, the motion's passed six to zero for your patience for just a couple of moments while we get everything arranged for our in-camera session. <laughs> 